Welcome to Quality Improvement, Learning from Mistakes, Error Reporting and Analysis and HIT. This is Lecture A. The focus of the next three segments is on learning from mistakes. The first segment discusses the role of HIT in error detection and reporting. The objectives for learning from mistakes, error reporting, and analysis and HIT are to explain how reporting errors can help to identify HIT system issues, describe ways in which HIT can facilitate error reporting and detection. Just as HIT can be used to facilitate detection and reporting of error and learning from mistakes due to these errors, the design of HIT and the way that users interact with HIT can actually contribute to medical error. By the end of this unit, you will also be able to assess HIT for unintended negative consequences as well as examine common themes in HIT design deficiencies. Mistakes happen. The Institute of Medicine, IOM, surprised most people in 1999 when it published astounding medical error statistics. In 2004, the IOM advised the healthcare community that it must build a new delivery system to achieve large improvements in patient safety, and the health system itself needed to be capable of preventing errors from occurring in the first place while at the same time incorporating lessons learned from errors that do occur despite our best efforts. IOM published another report in 2011, pointing out the role of HIT in patient safety and building safer systems for better care. These points are incorporated in the quote from the IOM report on this slide. Quote, A new delivery system must be built to achieve substantial improvements in patient safety. A system that is capable of preventing errors from occurring in the first place while at the same time incorporating lessons learned from any errors that do occur." Unquote. Let's take a classic medication error using the quote Swiss cheese model unquote, of system failure proposed by James Reason. He likened the healthcare system to a stack of Swiss cheese slices where each slice represents an action or event in the care delivery process. The holes in the cheese are places that a process can fail, despite everyone's best intentions. Each cheese slice is a defensive layer in the process. When an error passes through one of the gaps in the line of defense, it usually bumps up against another defense. Sometimes, however, the Swiss cheese stacks line up, such that all of the holes are aligned and the error reaches the patient, as in the case illustrated above in which a pharmacist fails to check a patient's allergy status because the allergy history was not obtained. The prescriber wrote an order for a medication to which the patient was allergic. The nurse gave the patient the drug to which he or she was allergic, and the patient arrests and dies. In the kitchen, each slice of cheese that you add to the stack introduces a new layer that potentially covers one or more holes in the slices below. In healthcare, we may need several Swiss cheese slices. Take this slide, for example. When the patient forgot to mention that he had a drug allergy, a hole appears and the potential for risk is increased. If the allergy had been documented in the electronic record at a previous visit, when the prescriber entered the order in CPOE, the system would trigger an alert, telling the prescriber that the patient is allergic to the drug. The system provides a defensive layer. Should the prescriber choose to override the alert and still order the drug, the pharmacy system could alert the pharmacist to the allergy, and the pharmacist who reviews all medication orders would call the prescriber to discuss. Again, a defensive layer is put into place by technology. Throughout this course, you have learned a lot about a culture of safety and what such a culture entails. You have learned that we in healthcare need to admit that providing healthcare is potentially dangerous. We need to take responsibility for reducing errors and risk of preventable safety events. Blame free error reporting and learning from mistakes are integral to a safety culture in healthcare. During the course of this task, 
we find ourselves needing to communicate across traditional hierarchies and boundaries in an open environment. We strive to use a systems approach to error analysis, advocate for interdisciplinary teamwork, and we put into place structures to assure accountability for patient safety. Let's talk a bit about the role of HIT in error detection and analysis. How can HIT assist us to learn from our mistakes? We will discuss three mechanisms by which HIT helps to detect and analyze errors. These include automated surveillance systems, online event reporting systems, and predictive analytics and data modeling. Automated surveillance systems use electronically detectable criteria and rules to determine when potential or actual safety events occur. These systems don't rely solely on human cues, often missing when clinicians get too busy to detect early warning signs of impending safety events. Decision support logs summarize the numbers and types of decision rules fired, the interactions of the user with the decision rules, and the outcomes of these interactions. For example, if we have a decision rule that warns providers of inappropriate dosing of a drug for particular patient types based on, say, their kidney function, the decision support logs can tell us the number of times this rule fired as well as the number of times the prescriber either changed or failed to change the drug. Events can be monitored in the electronic medical record by using medical logic modules, also known as MLMs. Each MLM is an independent unit, such as a single data point, in a health knowledge base that takes the knowledge required, for example, a laboratory value, and combines this with a definition of the way in which the healthcare provider should apply this knowledge for a single healthcare decision. For example, MLM could keep watch for instances in which a patient's hematocrit or red blood cell count is low warning providers of new or worsening anemia. In addition, automated surveillance of certain codified diagnoses, e.g. in International Classification of Disease, or ICD-10, or SNOMED CT codes, new medication orders, or laboratory results using MLMs can identify the presence of possible adverse drug events. For example, if a patient is receiving vitamin K and is on a blood thinner, then the potential for an adverse drug event may be present if the required dose adjustment is not done and the desired level of blood thinning is not monitored more closely. Sample triggers in ambulatory care settings can use free text searching of the outpatient notes to detect adverse drug events. For example, for patients who are taking diuretic drugs to get rid of excess body fluid, the notes may be scanned for fatigue expanding the search using synonyms such as drowsiness or tired or lethargic. Dizziness, using synonyms like syncope or lightheadedness or vertigo or, quote, wooziness, unquote. Low blood pressure, using the synonyms of hypotension and decreased blood pressure. Automated surveillance can also be used to improve quality by identifying gaps in care by not following recommended guidelines. Claims data, such as Medicare claims data, can be mined to detect whether patients are adhering to preventive guidelines, such as whether patients with diabetes have received their eye examinations, appropriate blood tests, pneumococcal and flu vaccines, and other screening tests as recommended by clinical practice guidelines for this population. Paper-based voluntary reporting of adverse events has been in existence for quite some time. Online reporting has replaced paper reporting recently, although it is still voluntary. These systems allow for anonymous reporting if the reporter so desires. Non-punitive and confidential voluntary reporting systems provide useful information about errors and are more likely to become culturally acceptable by healthcare providers. Some states have mandatory reporting programs for errors resulting in serious harm. 
These programs are viewed as punitive since their intent is more often to provide data for public reporting and may be used to punish individuals or organizations. Individuals are not motivated to be thorough in their reports, but rather are often driven by self-protection due to the fear of reprisal. The information reported through these systems is usually managed by someone who is removed from the front line and generally only contains the information required. The rest of the story is never documented, nor is it available for review and analysis for the broad goal of error reduction. Kilbridge and Klassen tell us that automated surveillance systems typically detect adverse events at rates 4 to 20 times higher than those measured by voluntary reporting. Most adverse events voluntary electronic reporting systems are configured for reporting of a broad array of event types that affect both patients and staff. Here is a list of broad patient-level events. There are events that are noted as clear errors, such as medication errors or errors related to a procedure, treatment, or test. But you also see such events as patient falls and skin integrity issues, often due to inadequate risk assessment screening and institution of preventive measures. Event reporting systems also include defects in equipment, supplies, and devices. Furthermore, they include adverse drug reactions, behavioral events, and complications of procedures, treatments, and tests that are not necessarily attributable to error. Finally, they include care coordination issues that place the patient at risk. Each of these broad event types is potentially preventable. We can learn from them by analyzing the systems and processes surrounding the event. Regarding reporting events for staff and visitors, event reporting systems allow for reporting of assault by patients, staff or visitors, exposure to body fluids or chemicals, staff and visitor falls, and injuries that occur when staff are lifting or moving patients or equipment. Events are usually hierarchical to distinguish events that fall within the same broad category. Here is an example of how medication events can be categorized. Medication events can either be an error or an adverse drug reaction that is not the result of an error. We will want to look more closely at those that are in error. There are lots of types of medication errors because the medication process is extremely complex, and lots of people receive lots of medications in both inpatient and community settings. So we will want to look at the specific type of medication error, such as when the patient doesn't receive an ordered drug dose, or when he receives too much or too little of a drug that has been ordered for him. We want to look at circumstances around events, where a drug is given by the wrong route, the wrong drug is given altogether, or a medication is given to the wrong patient. Healthcare data repositories consist of unprecedented amounts of clinical and administrative data that provide a rich resource for us to learn from our mistakes. Predictive analytics uses statistics and logic to predict outcomes based on the presence of certain predetermined conditions. This allows us to see associations among clinical characteristics and risk of complications or adverse events. Here is a simple example. There is a lot of evidence that high blood pressure and being overweight increases a person's risk of having a heart attack. If the electronic system has a rule that looks for all patients who have a measurably high blood pressure and a measurably high weight, then it could provide us with information in which patients are a high risk for heart attack. And we can target this population for preventive measures. If we want to detect quality concerns, we can use this very same process. For example, predictive modeling could be used to accurately identify elderly patients in a community with a high likelihood of readmission, either readmission to the hospital or return to the emergency department. 
if we knew who was more likely to be readmitted, we could target interventions to expedite the admission process and reduce overcrowding in emergency departments, thereby improving timeliness and efficiency of care. It's common to incorporate a risk assessment model into event reporting systems. This model is used as a tool for priority setting, as well as to track outcomes. In addition to a harm category with subcategories of temporary harm, permanent harm, and death, most systems include a category for, quote, near misses, unquote, or circumstances that had the capacity to cause harm. This can include situations in which there was no error at all, but a risky situation was noted and fixed, such as noting that the emergency drug box had not been replaced. The Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality, AHRQ, refers to a, quote, near miss, unquote, as an event that occurs but that luckily does not cause patient injury. An example of this type of, quote, luck, unquote, may be a patient getting the wrong medication, but the medication is harmless. For example, if patient A is supposed to be given one baby aspirin every day, and, accidentally, patient B is administered the aspirin instead, chances are patient B will not have untoward effect, unless he is allergic to aspirin or if aspirin is contraindicated for patient B. So this is considered a, quote, near miss, unquote, or a close call. This concludes Lecture A of Learning from Mistakes, Error Reporting, and Analysis and HIT. In summary, we discussed the Swiss cheese model of error put forth by James Reason. Recall we said that error occurs when the holes in the Swiss cheese all line up or when all of the safeguards that we put in place to try and prevent error fail. We talked about how health IT can be used to help strengthen those safeguards and reduce errors to a minimum, recognizing that we may not be able to completely remove all possible error from any complex system. A culture of safety is one in which we understand the inevitability of error and assume the responsibility for the roles that we all play in error, both causation and prevention. The three mechanisms by which HIT helps to detect and analyze errors that we discussed included automated surveillance systems, online event reporting systems, and predictive analytics and data modeling. Finally, we discussed a risk assessment model where we differentiated between the characteristics of a near miss and harm, illustrating the escalating levels from simple near miss without preventable error to a full-blown error that results in death. <laughs>